from prisonplanet.com. Facebook is setting up lobbying group to argue big tech is essential to free speech. <laughs> also intends to argue that it must be allowed to compete with Chinese tech firms. From Steve Watson, Facebook is setting up an advocacy group in Washington, D.C. with the sole aim of preventing the U.S. government from regulating the company. The lobbying group will claim that big tech is vomit bags at the ready, essential to the future of free speech. Yeah. So there are a lot of problems with this, but I want to point out just in contrast, a story from Breitbart.com. Mark Zuckerberg, lockdown protests are misinformation. Facebook will ban organizers. Holy shit. Really? <clears throat> does, does no one pick up on the, the, the hypocrisy here? And there's so many, like, just, would you put that picture of, of Mark Zuckerberg on, on the screen here? Now, I'm generally very cautious to, you know, make aspersions based on someone's looks. But there is something about the soulless stare on this man's face. The haircut, the pale skin of someone who doesn't get much time in the sunlight. That just leads me to believe something is deeply wrong with this individual. Again, giving every person possible the benefit of the doubt here even accounting for all of the evils of Facebook. I am not going to try to diminish those at all. It's possible that Zuckerberg has been turned into a pawn of the deep state. And, and, and I don't want to get too crazy with conspiracy theories here. Like, yeah, he's MK Ultra, and they've got him on mind control, and CIA is really in charge of Facebook, and they pull the strings, and they tell Zuckerberg what's... Well, no, that's... We don't have to go to that level of silliness with it, but how many people behind government who really pulled the strings before Facebook do you think could hire the guns to threaten him effectively? Easy. He's not acting like a normal human being would in, in his situation. I'm a huge fan of epic rap battles of history. I would highly recommend Elon Musk versus Mark Zuckerberg as a great skewering of, of this. But there's something deeper to be read into it in the contradictions here. And when you think about the powers that be, the banking class, the real string pullers, who could threaten Zuckerberg into compliance, They, this, this would be nothing. They, they look at this and go, oh, great. Now we don't have to control all these newspapers and TV outlets and disparate things all over the internet. We have one hub and, and the conversation is so focused around this hub. You, think, you know, you can look at impressions and things like that. But when you, when you just look at the internet as a whole, how much of the conversation is controlled or affected by Facebook in terms of like, like if you, if you spend an hour on Amazon and an hour on Facebook, Amazon's not affecting the conversation you're buying your, but Facebook is controlling the bigger civic conversation in, in, in a whole other way. Of course, it's going to be controlled and manipulated. Is Zuckerberg the one that no, he looks like a zombie? It's, it's scary. And, and he's getting blamed, and, and in a sense, rightly so, for so much evil. And, and to this specifically, they're, they're saying, in, you know, out of one side of their mouth, we're essential for free speech. And on the other side, we're going to censor what we consider misinformation about coronavirus. This is their excuse. And, and whether you believe that Facebook is being controlled or not, it is in many ways as a corporate entity an extension of government. 
And by the ideology of Mark Zuckerberg as a statist, someone who generally speaking endorses the current status quo, maybe not in his heart of hearts, but at least in his public political pronouncements and, his, and, and in his actions, generally supports the, the mainstream authority. That's who we have controlling a conversation that we have allowed them to censor. Another prison planet story from this week YouTube CEO admits users don't like boosting of authoritative mainstream channels, but they do it anyway. YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki announced, admits that the company knows its users don't like the video giant rigging its own algorithm to boost authoritative mainstream sources, but that they do it anyway. This is the authoritarian mentality laid bare in someone who's been given a little bit of power. The trip now, is it voluntary in the sense that, yes, you choose to use YouTube? Is it voluntary in the sense that you pay taxes to a government that supports this intellectual property-based and corporate policy-based oligopoly on the internet that controls the conversation? It's a different question. This is not a product of the market. This is a product of corporatism. This is a product of government. Similarly, YouTube, owned by Google, is more an extension of government than an independent entity. For several years now, the company has artificially gamed its own search engine to ensure that independent content creators are buried underneath the wall of mainstream media content. This rigging is so severe that the company basically broke its own search engine with some videos posted by independent creators, almost impossible to find even if the user searches for the exact title. I have had this problem before, and this is why every interview where I get the chance, any like hour-long podcast or radio show that I'm, I'm doing now as a candidate, at the end of it, I, I say thank you to the host and thank you to the audience for making this show possible. I say, you know, to anybody watching this, thank you for making this show possible because as independent media, we do not enjoy the support of mainstream corporate sponsorship, and we rely on active and engaged audiences to support us. So please share this video, support the person who's interviewing me right now, and put your money where your eyes and your ears are. Support independent media, be that active, engaged audience that makes, us, makes it possible for us to do what we do. But even at a more fundamental level than that, look at my numbers on YouTube now, even now that we're back in regular production and we do really well with the live shows. But look, we've got videos that have been up for, for 24 hours that get like 300 views and you have a quarter million subscribers. Yeah, like, no, th those are the 300 of you. And thank you for actively finding our content for Adam versus the man. If it wasn't for you, the show wouldn't exist. And for sharing this video, for those of you who are watching live, sharing it right now. Well, we're almost done. Wait a few minutes and share it when it's over, right? But for sharing this video, for being that active, engaged audience, for helping us compete against the algorithms. This is not just some, this is not Adam just, oh, it's some conspiracy. Yeah, you're getting, you say you're getting censored. No, it's obvious. It's CJ's got some numbers pulled up. CJ, since, since we've got you here as the producer right now, anything that you want to say about uh, our statistics? Uh, on, on YouTube, and this is actually beautiful to see this climb here, uh, but it's kind of sad that just to get any play on YouTube, we couldn't just do what we were doing before, posting awesome content. You know, we have to do live videos and engage with people on, on YouTube directly, and that's great until we get something better, until we have, you know, of course, as I've always said, blockchain-based, social media decentralized. So, CJ. Uh, so, for those that don't know, started this and uh, uh, we were at about 1.4, 1.5 impression. Then we started consistently go Monday through Friday. You can see the impression are up 160. Um, that's, that's going up fast. Um, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, you can just kind of see that uh, the views are going up well, so again, that's all. Thanks to everybody possible and giving us the motivation to do this. Uh, some incredible feedback coming this way. That's how. That's what you get, sir. When you take awesome. Thank you so much, CJ. And about this, you know, 
like we have it here in black and white, almost impossible to find, even if the user searches for the exact title. If you, uh, you should be getting alerts for whatever it is that your preferred news source is uh, that, that, that show up like text messages. And if they stop coming, it's not because we stopped making videos. It's because YouTube killed the alerts for us again. Again, I say again, because it's happened before. So you really have to be active and engaged. In an interview with the New York Times Rabbit Hole podcast, Wojcicki said the decision to push authoritative search results was made after the Nice massacre, the Nice, that's nice as a Nice, France massacre, but that even after the change, these results were performing poorly in terms of engagement. As the YouTube engineers told her at the time, the users don't actually want to see it. But she refused to listen and told them it doesn't matter. We have a responsibility. Something happened in the world. And it's important for our users to know. And this is kind of like the government break your leg, give you a crutch, say you couldn't walk without it. Like, yeah, we're going to, we're you know, but the, the education system that has broken our legs and that we don't know as a country how to read between the lines, how to question authority, how to question news sources. And the crutch is, hey, now that we're out in the real world and we have the internet, we're all adults, instead of us developing mechanisms and, and a culture of being able to sift through lies, well, let's just have the authority that is now YouTube that, you know, and kind of came in voluntary, became now involuntary in many ways, and is saying, you know, we're going to we're going to do this without you. So use YouTube. I'm not saying don't use it, but don't let them fuck with your feed this way. Don't let them, and what they're doing is they're distorting their your worldview. This is not just, you know, evil because we know the motivation. Why do they like in you any YouTube video now? Look, like probably right down below this. What do we have? Are you get live on YouTube? Yeah. Does it have like right underneath the title? It has like a COVID, you know, CDC link. Are they still doing that underneath every video? Like you see, find the truth about is there is there something there? See, it's on every video. Uh, get oh, so we have an ad instead for the epoch the epoch times. So yeah, normally in that spot, what they've had there is nothing but you know and, and they, they have this on all sorts of news sites you know warning here's the author don't read this like you can't post anywhere now you log into facebook there's all sorts of stuff in that, that's like baked into the websites that is really disturbing and really reinforcing this fear and that the whole premise is don't think for yourself trust the authorities and the reason i'm such a tech optimist is that this technology is fundamentally empowering, but it means nothing without deliberate, conscientious use. And for independent media to thrive, it means active, engaged audiences, like all of you beautiful people who make what we do possible with Adam versus the man.